Hi, kid. I'm Motorman Mike. Welcome to Streetcar School. Our lesson today is the controller and how it works. If you've ever operated a streetcar, you know that the controller regulates how fast the motors run, and that determines how fast the streetcar goes. But how does it all work? In Streetcar School Lesson 1, we saw that electricity comes to the streetcar through the overhead trolley wire. The trolley wheel picks up the current, which travels down the trolley pole to the controller. From there, it goes to the motors. Finally, the electricity goes through the wheels to the rails, which return the current, completing the circuit. A streetcar like TCRT 1300 has four motors, one between each set of wheels. The motors are wired together in pairs, one and three, two and four. If all of the voltage in the trolley wire was sent directly to the motors all at once, the streetcar would jump ahead suddenly and very quickly. That would be hard on the motors and gears to say nothing of what it would do to the passengers. So the controller needs to be able to send a very small amount of current to the motors so they start turning slowly. Then the amount of electricity can be increased gradually to allow the streetcar to go faster. The controller accomplishes this in a variety of ways. In lesson two, we discussed resistance and conductance. We know that some materials conduct electricity better than others. Iron, for example, allows electricity to pass through, but offers some resistance to current flow. We also know that the length of the conductor is a factor. How far does the current have to travel? Let's begin with an iron bar about eight and a half feet long. That's an awkward length to deal with, so we'll ask Superman to use his super strength to bend that long bar into a more convenient shape. We still have an eight and a half foot length of iron, but now it's a square just nine and a half by seven and a half inches. Electricity passing through this shape doesn't get any shortcuts. It still has to travel the entire eight and a half feet. And because iron offers some resistance, some of the electrical energy is lost along the way. It becomes heat, another form of energy. Here's an iron resistor plate used in a streetcar. Just this one plate isn't nearly enough to reduce the amount of electrical energy present in the trolley wire. We'll need to add many more plates just like it. We'll group 22 plates together in a box. Plates are wired one to the next, so electricity has to travel through all of them. That's a total of 180 feet of iron conductor in this one resistor grid. Underneath the floor of our streetcars, you'll find three resistor boxes, each with 22 plates. They work together as one grid to provide about 540 feet of resistor. That's more than the length of 10 streetcars. When all of the resistance is applied, the electrical current zigzags its way through each individual resistor plate. By the end, most of the electrical energy has become heat, but there's a little current left to start the streetcar motors turning. This zigzagging path is the electrical symbol for a resistor. The controller has a handle that can be rotated. In the starting position, the controller is off. No electricity flows through to the motor. As you rotate the handle clockwise, you'll feel the first of several notches. Let's diagram what happens in the first notch. There is a symbol representing a resistor. Circles represent each of the two motors in a pair. Power comes from the trolley wire, and the controller routes it to the resistor. After passing through the entire length of the resistor grid, the current flows to the first motor, and then to the second. From there, it goes to the rails and completes the circuit. In this circuit, the two motors are wired in series. You'll remember from lesson one that in a series circuit, each component shares the electrical current. It's divided equally between them. In this light string, each lamp uses one-fifth, 20% of the total. In notch one, each of the two motors uses half of the electrical current left after its trip through the resistor. In notch two, you'll notice one major change. The amount of resistance has been reduced. 
Instead of using the full length of the resistor grid, a part of it is bypassed, allowing more current to flow to the motors. With the additional current, the motors turn faster. And in notch 3, more resistance is dropped, but the motors still remain in series with each other, dividing the current between them. In notch 4, we still have a little resistance in the circuit, but in notch 5, it has all been eliminated. All of the current from the overhead is being sent to the motor pair. This is an efficient way to operate. Nothing is being lost to heat. But the motors are still wired in series, so they each utilize just half of the electrical energy. And remember, the other pair of motors under the streetcar is wired in the exact same way. At the Minnesota Streetcar Museum, we use only the first five controller notches. But controllers like this had several more. Let's see what they did. In the sixth notch, all of the resistance is again added into the circuit. There's a good reason for that. Take a look at how the two motors are now connected. Instead of being in series, they're now wired in parallel. You'll remember that in a parallel circuit, each component receives all the electrical energy. In this string of lamps, each one shines at full brightness. Now you can see why all of the resistance has been added back in notch 6. When the motors are switched from series to parallel, the amount of current to each motor doubles. Without the added resistance, the streetcar would jump forward. What did notches 7 through 9 do? I'll bet you're way ahead of me by now. If you said they dropped resistance while keeping the motors in parallel, you're correct. How does a controller accomplish all of that switching and rerouting of electricity? Inside the controller cabinet, a shaft extends down from the handle on top. In a row along that shaft are many copper fingers. As the shaft is rotated, those fingers make electrical contacts. At each notch, different combinations of connections are made. The controller does the job of dozens of electrical switches. Well, that leaves the other smaller handle on top of the controller. It's called the reverser. It makes the streetcar go forward or backward. How? We'll see in the next chapter of Streetcar School.